that makes me love the gospel more. Jesus Christ came into the world and brought a message to make all nations one. All men one in Christ. As long as you stay out of Christ, you're not one. But he can make you one in him. And when a man obeys the gospel, he becomes one. And every brother in the church, they're all one in Christ. And that's a puzzle today. Somebody says it's Christians in all churches. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. If they are, then there's confusion in all churches. Yeah, just one way. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Then to let you know he meant what he said, no man cometh to the Father except by me. He meant what he said. No man, your papa, your mama, nobody else. Nobody coming to Christ only by him. Not John the Baptist. John the Baptist came in the world, done a good wife. But you know why I picture John the Baptist like this? John the Baptist is like a caboose. A caboose runs behind the train, and the train pulls the caboose. But the engine is in the front. I said the caboose. Well, John the Baptist was a caboose, but Jesus Christ come running the engine. And anybody fool with John, you're right in the caboose. As awful as you can get with John is in the caboose. But we want to get in there where the head of the thing is. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, shed his blood on Calvary in order to make us all do what? Speak the same thing. And be no division among us. Not one a Baptist, one a Methodist, one a Presbyterian, one a Catholic. Well, Jesus, if that be true, just common sense will tell you we're right in a bundle of confusion. Neither one of them believes the other's right. What makes us right? The Word of God. Speak where the Bible speaks, and be silent where you can't find speaking for it. The Bible teaches us that Jesus said many other signs. Truly did he in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are not written. They are written that you might believe. That's the way you came from, is that right? <laughs> I read in my Bible why Jesus came up one time and a man had been dead four days. The Bible says four days. And the girls met him and told him that Lazarus was dead. He said to them, he said, no, he's not dead. Oh, why? I'm the resurrection. And I'm the life. Show me how you hate him. Sure, man, don't come telling me about his death. Now, they want him to understand what they meant by that, and they told him, he's stinking now. <laughs> Showing up dead when you stink, is that right? That's right, that's right, he's stinking. Right. Now, somebody sitting out there said, that's what I hate about Keeble. He could use a better word than stink. Well, stink is a word to use, because that's written. It's written, ain't no, ain't no, you know what y'all want me to say? He's modified. Uh, you, you say it like the Bible says it, and a man can understand it, is that right? Yes, yeah, speak how the Bible speak. I like that word stink, he's stinking, sure enough dead. Jesus walked up there to a stinking man, I told that stinking man and called him by his name. Is that right? <laughs> laying down there, laying down there, and he called him by his name. Why did he call him by his name? Because if he hadn't called him by his name, everything in the cemetery would have got up. <laughs> Just as able to raise a thousand as he was one. That's the confidence I got in him. I got the faith, but he didn't want but one, and he calls it by his name. He don't want but one church. That's when he's got one name. He didn't raise the, he didn't die for the Baptist church because that ain't written. Methodist church, he didn't die for that. If you ain't either one, I'm not saying this to me criticize, but I want you to be informed correctly. He didn't build all these churches. If he did, then he ought not to come here because he built a lot of confusion. The Methodists and Baptists can't get along. They can't hold an annual conference and association at the same time. 
You kick out people right now. They can't organize a legislature. Right now. They can't get even started. I read the paper and laugh. Man, is a terrible thing. A very big bunch of intelligent men sitting up at the Capitol and can't agree on nothing. <laughs> that is all. Oh, what's the matter? What's the matter? And they got the wrong kind of knowledge. Amen. Wrong kind. Amen. Why, you don't mind. They'll be fighting up there before it's done with because it's getting hot. Getting hot every day. Well, what's the matter? They need Christ. Amen. Right today, they need a gospel sermon priest up there. A real gospel and a preacher with a nerve to preach it. Amen. Then set them down. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's all the thing will bring us one and make us all respect one another is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. All speaking the same thing and no division among us. My friends, Jesus told Lazarus to come out of the grave and call him by his name. Then he stood with his grave clothes. Jesus said to the one standing around, Loose him. Loose him. Take all them things off. Let him go. That's right. Thank you, Brother Phillips. Loose him and let him go. And that's all you need tonight. If you're in a church not in the Bible, you're dressed up in the wrong cloak. Well, what do you need? Loose him. Lay down that false doctrine. Lay down that church that's not written in the Bible. If I was in a church and you couldn't find its name in the Bible, I'd get out tonight. I'd get out tonight. I wouldn't wait in the morning. I'd hustle out. I don't want to die in nothing that's not written. But you wouldn't wear your wife's name. Or your wife wouldn't wear your name. If it wasn't written, where's it written at? Right where you got married. You're not legally married if y'all's name ain't written somewhere. If he leave a million dollars, you couldn't get none of it if it's not in writing. It's got to be in writing. And you can't go to heaven if your name ain't on the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Jesus Christ speaking to the Corinthian church through the Apostle Paul says you are living epistles, living letters, but known and read of all men. Living letters. Every one of y'all sitting here tonight wrote a letter today. I don't know what you put in it. You might have cussed. If you do, it, it's in there. Everything we've done today is close up in writing. Living epistles known and read of all men. I say, I want to live right. I don't want to mislead anybody. I want to lead everybody I can to Christ. How are you going to lead them? Tell them to hear the gospel. What else are you going to tell them? Believe the gospel. What else are you going to repent of your sins? What else? Confess Christ. What else? Baptism. Well, why would you put baptism last? Because it puts you in Christ. Don't get in Christ without baptism. I never make a little of baptism because that's the thing that puts you in there. Bury with Christ by baptism. Into death, like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we rise to walk. Not the old life, a new life. Born again, regenerated, heir of God, and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, I don't like people's preaching. I knew it, that's the reason I'm preaching this way. <laughs> if you seek to please men, not the servant of Christ, y'all tell them, well, that's written, I ain't got time. And the thing of it is, friends, I haven't got time to hunt it up. Somebody said, well, people don't tell you when nothing is written. That reason I don't tell you, go home and read it, and you'll run into it. One lady said to me not long ago, said, Brother Keeble, I went home and read out to you, and I couldn't find my church in the Bible, and I'm out of it today. After you left, I was baptized. Wouldn't be baptized if I was still reading. I love reading. Reading would stop you. Look for your church. You were going to a clothing store. You wouldn't go in a hardware store looking for clothes. No, no. That is, if you could read, search the scriptures, and then you think you have eternal life. Why go into a church not in the Bible when the one that you want you in is in writing? It's in writing. You we'll have to read this very book and find it. Jesus Christ said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. Blood bought, thou bought it hanging on the cross. Then somebody said, Well, what about the law? Didn't Moses, didn't Moses preach the law? Yeah, but that same Moses said this. 
for you, the prophets of the Lord your God, raise up. Your brother like unto me, Moses told all the Jews, him shall you hear. Yeah, you can't fool around here following Moses. Moses didn't have the gospel. A new law came in when Christ came. And he took away the first. Well, what was the first? The first was the law of Moses. And he established a new and living way. The church of the living God. Gospel of Jesus Christ. A new way. Somebody said, well, I thought more the Adventists don't know that the law has been changed. Smart men, too, been to college and had their brains expand. They don't know the law. They don't know that it's been. Jesus had to die. Shed his blood on Calvary, taste death, crown of thorns put around his head, cost a whole lot to change that name. Give us a new law, a new way. Now in my conclusion, I trust that if somebody in this audience tonight willing to give up Moses' law, that old law, and take the new law given to us through Christ. And he had to die on the cross, bury it in a Joseph's new tomb, conquer hell, death, and the grave to bring this new way and establish it on this earth today. Without the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, you're yet in your sins. May God bless you tonight. Somebody ready, I hope. Somebody not ashamed. Somebody willing to bow. He said, Brother Keeble, I want to be baptized. I want to comply. Well, you hear the gospel, believe the gospel, repent of your sins, confess Christ, and baptism put you into Christ, and you arrive another man, a new creature, born again, regenerated, heir of God, and a joint heir of Jesus Christ. Is that enough? That's all. That's a plenty that makes a man over, makes him a new creature. And in my conclusion, if you will tonight, the Spirit and the Bride says, Come. And let whosoever will come and take the water of life free.